Now we've done, we've gotten a great introduction to division. We've gotten a great introduction to division. We know how to divide. Congratulations, you know how to divide. Now we're going to get into some problems when the remainder is not zero. And it's going to be really, really easy. There's going to be no tricks or no problems or nothing really confusing here. So let's just go ahead and do it um, and take a simple problem first. Let's say you have 7 and you're going to divide by 3. Okay? 7 divided by 3. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the problem just like before, 7 divided by 3. And it's the same question as before. There's nothing different here. What you're doing is you're saying 3 times what number, which I'm going to write up here, is going to give me 7. 3 times what number is going to give me 7? Let's just go ahead and, and see if we can figure that out, okay? 3 times 1 is 3. That's not right because we're looking for 7, okay? 3 times 2 is going to give me 6. But that's not right because I'm looking for 7. 3 times 3 is going to give me 9. But that's not right because I'm looking for 7. You see you have a problem here, okay? Because 3 times 2 is 6, so that doesn't really work, okay? And 3 times 3 is 9, and that doesn't really work. So you might look at this and you might say, well, there's nothing here that can equal 7. 3 times nothing will equal 7, okay? That, and that's true. That's exactly right. So what you have here is a case where the division isn't going to have, you're going to have something left over after the division. That's the bottom line here, okay? So in a case when you can't find out exactly the right number to multiply by to give you what's underneath, you just do the best you can, okay? You do the best you can. How many times will 3 go into 7 without spilling over, okay? 3 times 2 would give us 6, okay? And that's just under 7, okay? 3 times 3 would give us 9. Well, that's too many because I didn't even have 9 to begin with, okay? That's too many. So what you want to do if you can't find a number to exactly equal is you just find the best number you can just underneath what you're looking for. So in this case, 6. 3 times 2 gives us 6. 3, we know that 3 will go into 7 um, 2 times, and that will give us 6. And we'll see, well, let's just see what happens when we do that. We'll go through the problem, okay? For right now, we're just going to work it like this. We're going to say 3 times 2 is going to give us 6. So what we do is we do just like we did before. We're going to put the 2 here, and we're going to say 2 times 3 is going to give us 6, okay? We're going to put a line there, and we're going to subtract, just like we did before, okay? 7 minus 6 is going to give you 1. You all know that, okay? Now, when you have a number down here below, you remember in all the other problems we had a 0, but now we have a 1, okay? So the question is, can 3 go into 1, okay? That's what you need to ask yourself next, okay? Can 3 go into 1? Well, here's one ball, okay? And the question is, can 3 go into 1? Okay, can 3 be divided into 1? The answer is no, because remember, division is kind of like you're making groups of 3 in this case, right? Well, if you only have one ball, you can't make a group of 3, okay? You, you can't even make a single group of 3, so you just can't do anything else, okay? So anytime you have a number and you're dividing into that number and, and the number that you're dividing into is less than the number that you're dividing by, you can't do that. You, you just can't divide anymore, okay? So basically you stop at this point. Okay, I'm going to erase this. And I'm taking this quite slow so that we make sure we understand. You basically stop at this point and say, okay, the remainder was equal to 1. That's why I had you do that before. The remainder is equal to 1. So when you write the answer to this problem down, the answer will be 3 divided by 7 